Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we're going to move on to review day. Got some good questions. And we had a request for fall 2019 test four. All of these early questions are from the same test. Not surprised. Study guide said to look there. And we're going to be doing some sugars to start with. So we're going to have to find tagatose. Tagatose from our handout. It's a ketose. And I have fall 19 open. I thought I had it open. Here. Uh, tagatose. Can you read sideways? Why not? Tagatose is right here. Um, keto, six carbons, left, left, right on the stereo centers. We got it. So tagatose, move it over a little bit here. We're starting from here. Ketose. And left, left, right. And OH. And we have to loop it around and do all of our steps to make a furanose. Furanose. One, two, three, four, five. So that right there is the oxygen of interest. And you've been practicing these, but I'll do the steps for at least this first one. There's your icon and uh, that's carbon two. Carbon one is in the loop. Uh, left up, left up, right down. And this is the CH2OH with the wrong OH on it to make a ring. That would make a nice Pyrenos. We need that one right there. So our swinging action is going to involve the normal swing to get the OH up to where the CH2OH is, the CH2OH to where the H is, and that goes where the OH is. And when we're finished, keeping in mind, carbon two of this thing is going to hook up. That's carbon two with carbon one of another sugar. And this is going to have the CH2OH up and we need uh, alpha. So the off of carbon two will be down. So I'm going to do it a little higher than halfway up the screen. Just a little planning. You don't have to worry about such things with a blank page, do you? So we're ending up here. CH2OH. And this is the red O. And the other O's remain unchanged. And we already talked about this having to go down. And don't forget, there was a CH2OH off the same carbon. This is a ketose. That there has nothing to do al with alpha or beta. It's the oxygen that is trans to the CH2OH that makes this alpha. We're also gonna to have to find for ourselves a rabinose and make a pyranose. A rabinose is a five carbon aldehyde sugar as depicted right here, a rabinose, left, right, right. Huh. Interesting at the bottom, it's the same as uh, tagatose. I think that was totally accidental. And a rabinose. And left, left, right. Aldehyde on top. None of those O's can make a pyranose. This is one of those ones where we're not going to do a rotation. That has to make ring size six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That is the right one. So that's gonna hook up. And carbon one 
with yes, ara beta arabinose. Yes, ma'am. Sorry for interruption, but you said it's left, right, right for arabinose. Yeah, left. Oh, left, right, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, no, thank you for the interruption. That's the perfect interruption I need when I say something and then I don't follow through and do it. <laughs> yeah, I think I got too tight. I'm not going to the right place here. Here we go. Arabinos. Uh, yeah, left, right, right. Vous avez raison, mademoiselle. And left, right, right. Glad she caught it before we moved further. And uh, keeping in mind, this will be a, a beta arabinose. Uh, there's the anomeric position. And this is a D sugar. So you can fall back. It's going to be a fallback uh, to your old biology definition for normal D sugars that beta is up. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go full speed ahead here and do this for you. And that has to be up. Beta for that sugar, alpha for this sugar. And this is, uh, make sure I get it right. One away from the carbonyl. This used to be a carbonyl here. One away is up. The others are down. Of course, going into the next question, these things don't bother us. No boxes on your test. And that completes that one. I'm pretty sure there's no, oh, I didn't read my deoxys and my am aminos. That's how I normally do these anyway myself. So find carbon three on tagatose. Don't forget carbon two is here. Three is there. Deoxy just means, what does it mean? It gets rid of the oxygen. Well, the H sneaks in and bonds to the carbon. It's the CH2 there now. So we took care of deoxy and four amino, carbon one, two, three, four, where the OH is, is now an amino. And we'll take care of that here. Down amino, because it was down OH. Stereo center is the same. NH2. And now we've got full credit, six points, not to be laughed at. And we had a request for all of these. So I'll do the next one. Next one, we've got to unravel. And we're going to do some unraveling to get to this point on this one. Top, top part. And thinking ahead to get it back into the loop is this direction, right? You want to make it into the fissure. So you're rotating C back to the loop, O to where the H is, and H to where the C was. And we'll take care of that. Here's the anomeric carbon. It used to be an aldehyde, and now it's an acetal. And that's down, that's down, that's up, down, down, up, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. And the, the rotated one, uh, up lefting for H, down writing for the OH. We'll put a red dot in it just to be consistent with how we've been looking at them today. And CH2OH got part of the loop. It's part of the loop now. And what we have there is D gulose. Right, right, left, right. Just verifying. Gulose, right, right, left, right. And there you have it. And coming back and doing this bottom one here. There's the anomeric, the O, the one that made the ring. There's a deoxy on here. That's fine. Uh, here we have to, we'll incorporate the benzyloxy here. Or O benzyl, I think is a better way. Anyway, I'm just talking. Let's keep working here. Uh, similarly, 
sigma rotation wise. Got to get the carbon back in the loop. Looks like another normal D sugar. Why do I say that? Well, to get the carbons back in the loop, the O ends up being down right, which is D. And this is a ketose. Anomeric O there. And then it goes down right, up left. After rotation, that is down right. And the green H up left. Don't need to see the green H, but you know, just so you know where we're at. And then we have a CH2 with an NH acetyl, but it came from this thing. Now we can put NH acetyl. Do you want to put everything the way we see it? Why not? NHAC and up here, up here we had O benzyl on that position. We'll put that in the name. And there's a deoxy up there. So let's name the top sugar. Uh, is this alpha or beta? Well, it's down in the CH2, which is up. It's alpha. And this one is up in the CH2. Something is also up. This one's beta. All right, naming. So we have six O. That's a capital O. Let's make sure we know it's a capital O. Benzyl. So on the oxygen of carbon six, there's a benzyl attached. And it's gulose. It's D gulose. Is it pyranose or pyranoside? That's the question you're asking yourself. And it's a pyranoside because it's an acetal. It's got an alpha linkage from carbon one of D gulose to carbon two to two. And two is also, oh, it's not also. Two is beta. Two of, oh, we never looked up our sugar, did we? Uh, ketose that has right, left, right. Believe that's sorbose based on all the examples we were doing the other day. Uh, right, left, right. And right, left, right, sorbose. And it's one deoxy. Six N. Not not even say N. Acetyl amino, and then I realize I've got alphabetization issues. Acet amido is that one way to say it? And we just said sorbose, one deoxy. Six acetamido D sorbo. Sorbo is in a ring size five. It's a furanose or a furanoside. And it's also an acetal. Ether, ether, side. So yeah, eight points. Not trivial at all. Save that. So we have those two. I think we're doing okay on time. Yeah, I think maybe we can... We might run a little longer, but let's get this next one done. Uh, we're going to do a steroid. Steroid ends at C24. That means the last carbon gets cut off at 24. And it says 24 is also involved in a lactone. You'll notice those lactones seem to be pretty popular. 
And we have a sugar attached uh, to carbon three, three with the steroid outline below. And that's a deoxy. There's no typo here. It just looks like a typo. You're saying there's no way that's not a typo. Xylyl, maybe there is one. Deoxy, oh, the Y ends here. Deoxy, like so. Furanoside, lyxose. So we better go be looking up some lyxose. I likes me some lyxose. Let's go. And lyxose is down here. Uh, lyxose, uh, left, left, right, five carbon aldehyde sugar. Left, left, right, five carbon aldehyde sugar. Got the aldehyde already. Left, left. Right, and two is deoxy, so we can do this. Don't forget to put a dot there or something so you don't forget that's actually a carbon. CH2, and it's a, there's carbon five, it's got a normal CH2OH down there. Uh, like sulfurinos beta furanos, so it's D sugar. Wow, that's supposed to be a dot. Got carried away. Three dots. Why not? I think after you've done enough of these, you realize every time you have a D sugar and the uh, the D O on the right side is used to make a ring that puts the C H two O H up. So beta will also be up off the anomeric position. So I'm going a little faster to a final answer here. This O is going to be connected to carbon three of our steroid. And we got a two deoxy and an up lefting. And after all the rotations were said and done, we ended up with this. It's definitely beta. So you draw your nice little steroid rings. You've been practicing, right? They're not hard. You just got to remember four rings, always six, six beside each other. Then it goes up to a six and then straight across to a five. A, B, C, D, E is the convention of those rings. Carbon one is here. Three is there. It says carbon three is connected to the sugar outlined. Uh, sorry, this is connected to three outlined here. And we got the normal methyl groups. So you remember this one's, uh, this one's, what's this one? 18 and 19. Better draw them, except that 18 is an aldehyde. Oh, and studying steroid chemistry is fascinating. How they how these reactions actually make aldehydes on these methyls, it's 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 its, its own course. It's fascinating. But we're never gonna get that far. Uh, 18's an aldehyde steroid, ends at 24 para N N dimethylamino phenyl on 11. Whoa. 10 was here. And of course I never have room where I need it. And that was nine. And 11 is right there. So we have a para N N dimethylaminyl phenyl. So you draw a phenyl first on 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go to the para position, put a nitrogen, and put N N dimethyl. We're getting even for using that. This guy used our box here. We're using his box in here. It's nice. That's 11. Alkenes between five and six, three, four, five, six. And uh, eight, nine. So eight, nine's here. And 2022. 20, oh, yeah. Where are we at? Uh, we haven't even, that was 17, 18, 19. 20 with a normal methyl. Normal methyl groups. Remember, 24 is not nor got a normal methyl normally. But, okay, so where are we at? 2021. 
And then we have 22, 23, 24. That's the end. And it says that 24 is a carbonyl. Not the best drawn carbonyl. And lactone oxygen on 21. So remember, this was 20 and this is 21 is the, the methyl. Oh, how are we going to draw that? You know what you're going to do. You're going to forget you drew that methyl earlier. Just draw it downwards. It's easier to draw the ring, that's all. Draw it downwards. There's, oops, it's not an O. It's a methyl first. C attached to O attached to 24. There you go. And there you have that. Lactone uh, oxygen 21 is 21. And there's 24. And I think we have everything. And that's a great spot to stop. And that's a lot of points, nine points. And we're saving. And when we come back, we will be first looking at question five in the same exam, a phosphatidyl inositol. And this will, this will be where we learn what an inositol is. So I'll see you very shortly. And until then.